Welcome back, everybody, after a short delay. How are you all feeling? Pretty good? COVID sucks, kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are continuing our campaign of Mass of Nerlathotep. We're going to be starting the London chapter tonight. And Travis, you're first in line here. Hi. I'm playing our. I'm playing Victor Oswald, um, homeless man or vagabond extraordinaire, with his son Theodore Oswald. Mm -hmm. And Joey. Uh, hi, I'm Joey, and I am playing uh, Connor Leon. Uh, Mechanic and drug smuggler. <laughs> it's drugs now, huh? <laughs> it's drug. It is a drug. <laughs> it is, but usually when people say drugs, they don't mean booze. Um, you're a booze smuggler, not a. Uh, no, no, it's a drug. <laughs> exactly a drug smuggler. Actually, actually, he's more of a drug fiend and smuggler. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Terry. Hi, I'm Terry. I play James. I am the medic, the historian, uh, the protagonist of this story. <laughs> I will still hold on to that forever. I enjoy. I enjoy how I've become person. the protagonist. I can't. You're the you to die first. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we call in the business a red flag. <laughs> and Bri. Hi, I'm Bri. Uh, I am playing Bernadette Brandt, who is a moonshine maker and very good with guns. Alright. Remind me never to go on a gunfight with you. Unless I'm on your side. It's a good, it's a good idea. <laughs> Never do it. So we have, uh, we have passed away, passed through the month of February, uh, with your investigations at the beginning of the month, uh, and then a few weeks of lying low, waiting for uh, passport to come in for Victor. So that all of you can move on to your next location in London. Uh, there were a few questions. Um, your, well, your lawyer is going to be in the hospital for some time still. But his assistant is going to suggest to you that uh, English laws being what they are, it would not be wise for you to, uh, to openly carry most of your firearms into the country. It is fine to take shotguns of the non-sawed-off variety. Those are just legal because they don't count as guns. Uh, pistols or anything else like that would... It is possible, though difficult, for foreigners to get licenses to carry firearms in the country. So she suggested that uh, you can have your weapons shipped with you, you won't have access to them until you've obtained a license to be allowed to carry it. You can also choose to uh, just try to smuggle your weapons into the country, which in the case of a sawed-off shotgun is really your only option. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So, How what are you all thinking about your weapons? How thorough are the searches? How suspicious do you look? <laughs> <laughs> Detained on site. <laughs> oh no, don't ask that question. I mean, I'm homeless. Yes, I, I'm aware. You are, you are a vagrant. So, you would get a roll. If you choose to try to smuggle. And obviously, I'm not going to say, okay, you go to prison, you're out of the game now, or anything like that. But it's just another complication if you get 
Peacock trying to smuggle a weapon in the country. Yeah. <coughs> What would go into me? Someone's dog is freaking out. Oh, don't worry about them. They're just barking at uh, Aaron. He's <laughs> moving again. Ah. While you all mull that over, uh, you are also going to get a little refresher on the clues you've uncovered so far. So, let me just link you to our Miro board. I could probably try to forge some documents. You want to forge, uh, you want to forge a, 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 a carry license? Yeah. But you know, it is not. It is a. It is a low likelihood of working. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. What would I call that? Uh, I would assume that law and. Oh no! I have the exact skill for it. Art forgery. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> see, you have. You have art forgery. <laughs> yeah. No, it's art. Yeah, slash, the it's highest... art slash craft for it. See. If it were a license that you're familiar with, I'd let you do it. You have one. Okay, I think so I would I make you make a combined with roll. The law check. Yeah, I think I'd make you a combined uh, forgery and law roll. Can you do a combined check with two people? Uh, yes, I suppose so. Well, what is everybody <laughs> else's law again? I am the law. I don't. Need I that. have a five. I have a 20. I just know cops are bad. Uh, I think I, yeah, think I, I didn't have the have highest five. <laughs> the only thing I need to know... I don't know if a 20 would about be the... good enough. <laughs> Won't know until you try. True, true. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we can attempt and then I can... If we, we want to have real fun, if we want to have real fun, we can wait to roll for it until uh, it's called in question. <laughs> yes. Yes. Line roll it. Oh. Yes, absolutely. Oh. I have attempted to forge some documents, and I don't know how convincing they will be. Okay. Uh, Alright, so is everybody taking their handguns then? Oh, I'm not telling I them. I, I, I'm gonna go. I think what I'm gonna do is enter separately. You know, there's one boat. There's, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, we don't. We're not entering all at once, like as a group. Okay, so you're just coming down the gangplank at different times. Yeah. Okay. At least I will. I'm a, I'm a secretive man. How oh yeah, big? that's not gonna stick out at all. How big is a 22 short auto? Th those are like, yeah. I'm I'm just putting it in my cleavage. Cleavage go. Uh, <laughs> They're not gonna check uh, there. I'm a lady. I got a 45 automatic, which is a 1911, which is about the same size. Is that uh, is that toxic femininity? Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Mm, damn, I should have got me an underwear gun. Andrew, you said uh, shotguns are okay, right? Uh, yes. Yes. Then I'm just gonna bring not, my uh, the not strong off version. Not you, can't do, uh, you can't just walk around the city carrying a shotgun, but you can take one into the country, no problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, they're, they're, I'm gonna take my French gun. <laughs> At this point, they were more conversation pieces instead of weapons, shotguns. So, uh, yeah. you said we would have to go and try and get our license? Uh, yes. You would most likely, when you get to London, you go to Scotland Yard and apply with the police. Alright. I'll probably end up trying to do that. And then, how would, uh. 
how would the whole where would my guns be? With uh, with me, probably. Yeah, you could have or... them. Uh, you could have them packed specially and let the uh, the customs people know, hey, there are guns in here. I'm gonna get a license and come back and claim them. We yeah, okay. we could totally do that. But you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna have. I'm gonna have that document forged, just in case they tell me no. <laughs> So let them know first that there might be a crime, and then commit yeah, the crime. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Never change, Joey. No, it's, that's cool. actually not a problem. Like, uh, since you're not planning to stay in England, you could say, okay, well, I'm just going to leave them in the trunk at customs until we leave the country. Pick them up then, while I go somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. I just saw uh, a knife. Point. I want knives are to myself so. Knives are not controlled. Yeah, I got uh, a, a multi-tool knife in my back pocket at all times. <laughs> okay. Um, while you're having while you're while you're having your last few weeks in New York, uh, you're going to be reminded of the clues that you currently have. Related to uh, related to New York. Uh, first of all, there is a, a Monk's, Ham Monk's Hammer's effect was a business card for the Penhue Foundation in London with Edward Gavigan, the director. It's his personal card, uh, and it was Aubrey Penhue, a renowned Egyptologist who was the expert that joined the uh, the Carlisle expedition on the trip to Egypt. Uh, you also know that London was the last place Hammer visited. He'd been on sort of a world tour, and London was the last place he was before he came to New York. And it is the place where he seemed to completely lose his mind. Should ask, oh, for a knife. Would you I be able to get a butterfly knife? Uh, I don't honestly know if they exist. It's showing that they existed at that time. Oh, uh, yeah. So, 80... 800? So, I'd assume... I'm just... I know those are, like, not exactly, uh... Beagle knives, at least here. Well, I believe that's since the 70s. Okay. Because it would also be pretty good at like breaking windows if I really need to. Sure, you got just kind of little metal metal sticks. Uh, you're also going to be introduced uh, by reputation, at least. When, if you visit, what was his name? Hammer's publisher in New York. That is not me expecting you to remember. I'm talking to myself. Mm hmm Of course. Uh, Jonah Kensington at the Prospero House. You had agreed that uh, at the end of this you were going to write down all of the information you have and allow him first crack at publishing it. Yep. Uh, so if you visit him again, he will let you know that uh, in England, Mr. Hammer sometimes worked with uh, Mickey Mahoney, who is the editor of The Scoop. The scoop being sort of a tabloid newspaper in there. Uh, they do kind of focus on the weird. So the weird. they might have, yeah. Some of their stories don't end up being substantiated, others do. Probably take a look at them. Uh, but he uh, he recommends that you that you check in with him and see if he knows anything about what Hammer was up to while he was in them. Oh. We 
can do a little transition to our new table. Uh, Ooh. Ooh, that looks nice. I like this. Those roads are a nightmare. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's London. That's just London in general. Yeah, mm -hmm. like average London. God, no oh, I love that the, the passports are right on the side. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Honestly, I prefer roads that look like that to the straight crisscross nonsense. Yeah, who wants to know where they're going? <laughs> you can know where you're going. I, I'd rather the roads be formed with the land than, you know, cut. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But this is a good looking map. So, uh, oh wow, I can actually read it. Yeah, yes. Pretty high quality. Yeah, I like this. Okay. Now, um, you're going to arrive in the port of Southampton. Uh, it is going to be after, I believe, five to nine days. And when you arrive on March 5th, it is actually Connor's birthday. Celebrating it in his favorite country in the world. <laughs> oh, oh no, you did not. <laughs> there are some degrees of. Uh, how to piss off an Irish man? <laughs> yeah, it's you're fine. From England, just, right? It's fine. Just tell him here that Queen Elizabeth passed away. <laughs> uh, it's already down some of my Birdie, to confirm, you are smuggling your gun through customs, correct? Right here. Would you mind making a stealth roll with a bonus die for me? Because I think they're disinclined <laughs> to search you. A double barrel as well. And maybe a saw. A hand saw. If it's not sawed off, you can. <laughs> I'm gonna if suggest you buy a saw in England. <laughs> Instead of packing, here's my shotgun, here's my saw. <laughs> They're unrelated. They're brothers. Shh. Ooh. Okay. Damn. It's been long. You guys should roll. Of the same defense That's not fair. No, it's you, not extremely fair. rude. Uh, but as you're making your way through the uh, customs line, uh, you're going to feel maybe it's not quite as secure as you thought it was. And one of the agents is going to say, Ma'am, can I ask you to. Uh... Well, this is delicate, but. This is the customs, and I have to ask if you have anything to declare. I do not, actually. Thank you very much. <clears throat> okay. Is that the other stuff for everybody else? Like the Cyrus oh. Lopatia? It's still good. That's good for me. I have, I have one quick question. Would it be easier to go in with, like, a double barrel than a trench gun? A trench gun? B both are acceptable. The trench shotgun is a pump shotgun. That was used in warfare, uh, World War One. Yeah, that was part of the reason why. Yeah. Yeah, both are acceptable. Uh, the shotgun is considered well, a hunting gun. And it's not. Yeah, I would suggest that the trench gun might be seen as a weapon. Yeah. Okay, then. So I, I'd say double barrel. I'll just go with the double barrel. I saw when we cross. Uh, granted, I don't have one, so I would have found some cash from someone. But you, if you'll recall, you now have access to a large expense account. Oh. You do have to put the money, like, you have to do, you have to front the money and have it reimbursed, but you have access to a great deal. Yep. That's how you got your tickets. But, uh, Bernie. Yes. Uh, this is the I will point say where... real fast, uh, uh -huh. Gup says the ambient noises are a little bit loud. Okay. Um, 
Fair. Yeah, I'm gonna try to get a little bit of a little bit of a little bit well, this is the point where either you, uh, where either you're going to spend luck or you're going to push the roll or there are consequences. So you can push the roll by making a seal. Oh, wait, I do have luck. I've got karma. I, I should spend that. <laughs> you should. You don't want to have too much luck. <coughs> as long as you keep 30, whatever you spend is okay. Yeah? Yeah, I'll do that. I'm gonna spend some luck. Also, because I'm giving person. him a look. I'm giving him a look. If he tries anything, he knows I will make a scene. So everything that this rack happens, but then yes, you give him a withering look. And uh, he eventually shrinks away from you. Toxic. <laughs> uh, and so you have successfully smuggled the gun with the I would still suggest that you obtain a license before you wield it where anyone can see it. Uh, or leave no witnesses. That can lead to its own legal issues. I mean, they never caught Jack Ripper, so like... <laughs> so... I don't think we're as good as Jack. Uh, you all make your way over. Are you going to stop in Southampton or are you planning to go straight on to London? Doesn't sound like anybody cares for Southampton. I'm already in my least, I mean, my most favorite place in the world. On your birthday. <laughs> On my birthday. This is like Disneyland. So, uh, it is just a few hours ride. You will find yourself really good. Uh. First thing that hits you is the smog. Mmm. Because uh, as polluted as New York may be during this period, it is still a shock to the system. The city is just permanently blanketed. Uh, and you can... Those of you who are smokers, feel a familiar sting in your lungs. Those of you who are not smokers are going to uh, experience an unpleasant feeling. Uh, you are going to realize that if you need to do anything particularly strenuous, you might have a difficult time. At least until you get used to this terrible air. There is no getting right. used to terrible air. <laughs> Connor, Connor smokes and drinks and smokes, yeah. So this is just a little bit like a slightly worse air quality for him than normal. It's a very so, uh, deal with the constant. He only smokes whenever it's at the end of the day. He doesn't smoke during it. He doesn't want the car to smell like smoke for Birdie. That's a good thing. Uh, we should probably get a car first. Did we have a funeral for the old car? Considering how <laughs> badly it was banged up. <laughs> oh, I forgot about it. Oh, no. Whoa. <laughs> Connor... Connor has it has said just put it in the garage uh, at pause and he will and he will get to it when he can get to it <laughs> because it's his baby and he wants to put it back together. Okay. All right. And it will be waiting for you, and this is your reason that you have to make it back home at the end of the campaign. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got I gotta fix her. It, 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 like this is it. This is the this is the peak end of the game for him. Is he gets to go back home and repair the car? Bless you. Thank you. 
Uh, it is going to be probably afternoon by the time we disembark in London. Um, rental car agencies aren't really a thing yet, uh, so you're going to end up taking a taxi. Mm. I am sure there's a way you can hire a car at some point later. It's just going to take a little bit of time to get it arranged. And especially since you're not used to the place, and if you... I mean, just looking at the map, you can see these are some crazy streets. Look just like back home. So, uh, as you piled into a cab, you're going to be asked uh, where you'd like to go. What was the name on that card again? So, the Penhue Foundation, uh, the director of which is Edward Gavigan, is a large uh, clearinghouse and museum for Egyptologists. Um, it is the sort of place that you would probably need to visit by appointment. Did you announce that it was your birthday at all, Connor? I can't remember if he said so or not. Oh no, he yeah. he 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 probably wouldn't know until Birdie told it, it told him it was his. Okay. Yeah. Like, I would be like, all right. Um, at the very least, we gotta go drinking. I need to see what my competition over here is. So, how about how about we we do a little split up? Uh, I'll help. Connor, celebrate a little bit. Get him, get him all posted, and you guys. Oh um, yeah, I wouldn't be with you guys. Do you, you want to go with us? We, we still got a job. You think that <laughs> I'm gonna let you go drink and buy yourselves? <laughs> we do one thing first, and then we have a good time. Uh. Fine. Fine. What's the one thing going to be? <laughs> one thing is going to be stopping by that foundation to see how we can make an appointment. Alright. Uh, and probably stopping by the bank to see about getting my American dollars exchanged for some pounds. That would be a good idea. Yeah, that's a... It's just a flavor thing. But it's kind of an important thing, I think. Very true. <coughs> uh Yeah, let me just drop you all on here. Question. Do I yeah. have the ability to say, oh yeah, I know someone here? Potentially. Potential. Okay. What, uh, what is it you want to do? Uh, I was thinking about, like, maybe a old, uh, combat buddy. Someone I met okay. when I served. Sure. That, uh, it does seem very likely you would know at least some people over here. Mm -hmm. So, why don't we do the Penhue Foundation first? And then you tell me about your buddy. So when you uh, when you give that name to the uh, to the taxi driver, he's going to raise his eyebrows a little bit. Obviously, he doesn't take people here every day, but he will drive you into a very rich neighborhood in uh, in London, where uh, it's in central London. It is a high Victorian building. It is extremely tall, yet only has, I believe, two stories. So as you're walking up to the door, you can already tell that the uh, that the ceilings are going to be extremely high. And it is also the sort of place that when you walk up to the door, doorman opens it for you. And stands off to the side holding it. Yeah. I'm important. I'll go in first. Hey, you better walk fast. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, there is a man sitting behind the front desk. Uh, he looks up as you enter and he says, Good afternoon. I, um, I can't do... Listen, so, we might as well say at this point, I can't do any accents. <laughs> Andrew, I love your accents. Just try your best and I will enjoy it. <laughs> you don't have uh, to do accents. We're not professional actors here. Most no. likely what's going to happen is that English people will sound kind of snooty. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know how to break this too. That's how most British people sound. Sorry, apologies to anybody from England who ever watches this in the future. As the apologies. person that's playing a uh, as a uh, <laughs> Irishman, <laughs> no, I I do not apologize. <laughs> I'm just going to apologize to anybody who watches this. Uh, I apologize. But at the same time, this is what it is. Yes. So he looks up and says, Good afternoon. Welcome to the Pen Hugh Foundation. Uh, have you an appointment? We have not. We were hoping to make one at some point. We uh, ha good. have a friend who pointed us in this direction. Excellent. Can I have your names? And who, who may I ask, are you planning to, to see? I think I'm going to flash the card. Okay, and we'll just pull out the say, business card? Yes, and say that our friend Jonathan Hammer was in touch with this fellow and recommended we speak to him. Uh, my okay. name is Bertie Brandt, and these are my associates, Mr. Yeah, Oswald, Mr. Reed, and Mr. Leon. He just nods. Okay. Uh, he's going to say, there is, so in case you're watching, there is no hint of recognition when you say Mr. Hammer's name. He just dutifully takes down all of the information you're giving to him. Okay. He says, now Mr. Gavigan is, of course, very busy, but uh, I believe... I believe there's some room for an appointment later this week. Um, I will have to, I'll have to confirm this with him first. But if, let's say Thursday afternoon at two o'clock, are you available? We should be available. You know what? Let's Thank make it boy. Tuesday because today is Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we could just do a full week of drinking in London. So. <laughs> But uh, yeah, let's make it Tuesday. All right. That'll be absolutely fine with me. Uh. So he's going to ask, "Do you have uh, while you're here? Do you want to view any of the specimens on public display?" I'm afraid I can't take you into any of the research areas uh, without an appointment, but. Oh, absolutely. I, I'd love to get a bit of a look at the things you have here. It's piqued my interest for a while. All right. Uh, so if you all choose to wander around a little bit, uh, it is an opulent building. Uh, as you can see by the by the map here, mm -hmm. uh, there are several items. Uh, doesn't look like anything particularly suspicious, but there are sarcophagi, there are uh, large onks, there are uh, reliefs broken off from their <laughs> from their monuments and brought here for the public to view. We do have an Egyptologist yeah. in the group. I kind of want to look mm -hmm. at this stuff. So, tell us, nerd boy, what do we got here? <laughs> <laughs> well, what do we... Uh, I kind of want to look kind of at everything. Okay. 
try not um, to take too long on one thing, but I want to look at it, see if I catch anything that uh, really catches my eye. So you may you may know this already. You may pick it up from reading the exhibits, but the foundation has sponsored roughly twenty digs, sponsored or otherwise supported, roughly twenty digs in Egypt. Um, in fact, half of them have been since Sir Aubrey's unfortunate death. Uh, but unfortunately, many of them have been overshadowed by tragedy. A number, uh, 20 in all people have died during expeditions to Egypt. That's a heck of a number. One person per expedition and then some. Uh, so there are mummies, glass cases filled with pottery, statuary. It is quiet. Uh, you are almost completely alone in the building at the moment. Mm. And uh, the locked doors are obvious. We well, we've made, we've made an appointment. Yet. Yeah, we've made yes. an appointment. Okay. We'll just look at the stuff that is available and see whatever catches my eye. All right. So, I two will. Egyptologists. There's much that's uh, that's of interest. Uh, to a scholar's eye, it's a it's a like this is a wealth of information and artifacts that you have would be unlikely to see at any other time in your life. <laughs> So uh, I can imagine that you're having a great afternoon here. It does not, at least obviously, have anything to do with what you're investigating at the moment. I'll still enjoy my time. Of course. And Birdie, you were saying something. Uh, I was going to say either I'm going to go over to anything that he notices in particular, or I'm just going to pick something at complete random, just kind of go with my gut, pick something at complete random, and try to use a little psychometry on it. Okay. Just, That's just an for interesting fun. Thing to do. Just for fun. Alright, so this is something you're doing surreptitiously. Yes. Just try to pull <laughs> a little bit of where have you been? Alright. Um... James, what is catching your eye at the moment? You can make up anything you want that's just an Egyptian artifact. I feel like any type of uh, like tablet that has a bunch of uh, like any information on it, just to go and read it, would probably catch my eyes the most. Okay. So or something that would feel like stuff. would be like a like a headpiece to something. Like some type of like headpiece to you the group. Seer. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, Birdie, are you going to touch one of the tablets or one of the headpieces? I will touch one of the headpieces, and as predicted, my folks are home, so. Give me just a moment. Somebody else can do something and I can roll the psychometry when I get back, if that's okay. Okay, sure. Okay, I'll be back. All right. Uh, what do we have on the tablets? Uh, well, I believe that this is before hieroglyphics have actually been deciphered. Let's still try. Sure. Uh, in fact, you have a unique ability to try. <laughs> I guess it's now or never. Let me see. How does that work again? What ability does he have? 
Uh, he has an insane talent called insane language. He gains a temporary grasp of all modern languages or one archaic or mythos language for a short time. It lasts long enough to conduct an initial reading of a tome, conduct a conversation, or listen to a speech. But it can have the side effect of him forgetting every language except for the one he just learned. Yeah, it is possible. Uh, will you make a sanity roll for me as you, as you kind of twist your mind outside of what uh, normal physics would allow? Is there anything I'm adding to this, or is it just a normal, just a normal sanity roll? All right. You're going to you're going to get a translation regardless. It's just uh <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So you're not going to lose anything. Yeah. Uh, you are able to uh, you're able to maintain a grasp on reality as the hieroglyphics on this tablet start to make sense. And you realize that what you're reading is actually a uh, sort of a pay stub. So this is a record of the amount of food and money workers were paid working to build one of the pyramids. You are going to learn uh, both the amount of beer that they were allotted, the amount of bread, the fish. Uh, You're also going to learn about the accommodations they were provided, the housing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna to take be... notes on this. Yeah, go I ahead. I feel like I would have like a little journal and I'd just start writing some of this stuff down. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> if you can find a way to substantiate what you're reading here, this is going to put you many decades ahead of other Egypt uh, researchers <laughs> of Egyptian history. Oh, nice. So, uh, Connor and and uh, Victor. This is There's a bunch of old stuff in here. Some of it might look cool if you look like birds or big eyes or anything. But James and Birdie are kind of wandering around like this is the best place in the world. So I'm wondering what the two of you are up to while this is happening. The two back doors are locked, right? They are, yes. Oh. Are, we're left alone? Uh, yes. There may be a security guard wandering the floor, but he's not, like, watching you or following you around or anything. Are you two jokers going to attempt some escapades? <laughs> okay. Apologies. Do anything too foolish. No worries. This is Just not my for- element. We're just gonna have a drink. What's so dangerous about that? Why did we need a a, a sanity check? Oh, Uh, because I used uh, my insane language. Ah. To read some stuff. You guys don't have to. I only had to. It was to know if I would lose all my languages for a short time. Okay. Yeah, nothing (laughs) particularly dangerous or horrible happened. Just start okay. speaking ancient Egyptian to us, like, <laughs> why are you guys being weird? <laughs> God. Uh, we are, uh, we're, we're talking about getting a drink now, and I'm like, yeah, we're, we're just gonna get a drink. What's the worst that we could happen? We don't even have our guns. <laughs> now, are we, are we talking about the fountain in the center of the room, or some other type of drink? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure champagne is being put out and stuff like that. It's a it's a very fancy place. It's a very fancy place, but there's not uh, there's not any sort of dinner or reception. No one's here. here now. The artifacts it's just are left us out. in the guard. Ah. in the open. Sorry, what's that, Travis? The, the artifacts are left out on the open. Yeah. Well, yeah, for security. <laughs> This is not a general public museum. This is a mm-hmm. you have business here museum. Gotcha. Shall I roll my psychometry? Go for <laughs> it. 
<laughs> me. <laughs> We're just sitting there having a conversation about like, no, you're not allowed to steal anything. No. What's well, not and then leaving me the, in the trunk. background? Just. <sighs> okay. Uh, so what's going to happen is yeah, that uh, <laughs> you are paying a lot of attention to Terry. Uh, to James, I mean. As I'm and, scribbling down stuff. Yeah, possibly making sure that he doesn't notice <laughs> as you walk over and uh, instead of lightly touching, I think with that roll, you're going to fully grasp a headpiece. And that's when the security guard is going to say, <clears throat> excuse me, Oh, I'm afraid. Sorry. Yes. Uh, I I believe that we are going to be closing for the afternoon. Apologies. Um, I'll just my hands to myself. Okay. Yes, he's going to watch and make sure that you don't actually take it. But uh, I'm assuming you're not, so that's fine. No, no, I'm not taking. I just wanted to touch. And at this point, he is going to escort all of you out of the building. <laughs> oh, oh, man, there's so much I can learn. We have to come back. We have to come back. Well, we do have an appointment. And then you'll get to see all the things I've got in the back. Ooh. Oh, that sounds fascinating. Oh, you should. You. We're, we're going to get you some drinks. How is English booze, oh, I think, anyway? I think, I, was about to say, I think your camera froze for a little bit. <laughs> you okay there? So you will get um, uh, what what level of hotel are you going to ask your taxi driver to take you to? God, not a fancy one. We mid-range. like we could we could afford it for a bit, but no. Should, should we do mid range? Yeah. What are we doing? It mid wouldn't be bad. Picking mid the class. Out. If we're gonna, if we're gonna do anything high, like maybe high mid. Yeah. But not we're like okay. fancy. We're not going high end. So well off, but not rubbing elbows with royalty. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Or a pub. A no. hotel. Hotel. Okay. 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 Yeah. At least they have a place to stay for the night. Um, <coughs> so is uh, as you're as you're riding in the in the cab and making some small talk about uh, your plans for the evening, the driver is going to uh, suggest to you, uh, you uh, you folks have a little bit of money to throw around, right? And this is some sort of celebration. It is, yes. Well, uh, what do you, you, you want something really special tonight? Why, you got something in mind? Well, I, I've never been into plays. They, obviously, they don't allow the, the working class, but, uh, there's this, there's the Blue Pyramid Club. I, understand I don't it's think members they let only. half of us in. <laughs> <laughs> I understand it's members only, but I think you just... Like membership consists of paying a fee, <laughs> hmm. and uh, figure you coming, you folks coming down here to the Penhu Foundation, you must have some sort of interest in all this Egypt stuff. That is uh, kind of my field of expertise. That's just a suggestion, folks. What do you think? Should should we give them a try? Why not? It's not my day to celebrate. 
Like, uh, just, yeah. It's Let's not bring mind. Connor to the fancy place. Connor, where do we want to go? <laughs> How about this? <clears throat> I hope you don't mind, but I'm going to say what you're probably going to think is a dirty word. Are there any Irish bars around here? Oh, you want a rowdy place? <laughs> we do not mind rowdy. Ah, uh, yeah. Then I have I have just a spot for you. Just understand, it might be a little rough for you. Honey, I'm from the backwoods of America. There's very little that can scare me. <laughs> Cutter's like I, I cut her in as thick as eggs that he can muster. I I don't even know. I don't think I can handle her Irish rush, <laughs> an Irish joint. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then uh, after. So uh, he seems to pretty much consider himself hired for the day, unless you tell him otherwise. Eh, we'll keep him around. Uh, so he Always will take have you... a red shirt. <laughs> Does anybody want to give him a name, or is he just going to be around for it one day? You know, maybe at least a day. His name is now Henry. Hezekiah. I was going to go with I don't know. Henry. Hezekiah. <laughs> I was going to say Henry would be better. <laughs> I was going to go with Henry. Wow. Or like maybe I, Harry. Listen I, had, listen, I had a classmate named Hezekiah, and he, he was interesting. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine with a name like that. Uh, Maybe you, you he's Hezekiah, but he assimilated a little more, and he's Henry now. <laughs> <laughs> if we get any backstory off of him, we call him Henry, but we find out his name is Hezekiah. All right. So he will uh, he will take you to your hotel, a nice fancy hotel. Uh, wait outside while you check in, drop off your bags, perhaps. I don't know if you freshen up to go to this bar. No. <laughs> yeah. I have to say, I don't think we will. Come as you are, as long as that involves you having clothing. <laughs> and There's a chance you might lose some. Then he'll take you down to Limehouse. And down by the docks, there is a boat. Excellent. Uh, this is working uh, class pub. When you head inside, it's all sailors, dock workers. Uh, possibly not so much entertainment on stage as the crowd entertains. Get that movie scene where everybody kind of stops for a moment, looks at the door, goes quiet. They go back to their drinks completely. <laughs> That's how it should be. Uh, you can tell by the smell in the air that there is no, no high quality. Beer. Possibly not even much liquor here. Well, that's what I've got the flask for. <laughs> um, so I, I was gonna ask to introduce like a fact or something, right? Uh, could yes. I? Could I? Okay, can, can I roll like luck to see if the person working behind the bar is, is someone I know? <laughs> Okay. Yeah. This isn't something you can do all the time, but yeah, why not? In fact, Question. you know what? Screw it. It's more fun if it is a person. So let's not roll luck. That's fine with me. I was, I was going to say, 
roll luck, but if it's a critical fail, it's somebody who knows him and hates him. <laughs> <laughs> there is a good chance of that regardless. <laughs> Uh, give me give me one second while I pull up Irish names. Okay, it's an Irish person you know. All right. Yeah, yeah, this is an Irish pub, isn't it? Well, uh, yeah. The, yeah. Well, that's it's not the rule. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the rule. I don't understand. It, 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 it's, it's, it's the culture, not the rule. Well, um, here in America, it's the culture, not the rule. These are not great. You know, you know what? We're just gonna go with uh, Patrick. Patrick. Okay. His name's Patrick. Patrick the bartender. I call him Patrick. If, if it was really Irish, it'd be Patrick. <laughs> Listen, sometimes people say it enough that you just can't argue anymore. Patrick. <laughs> All right. So you walk in the door, and uh, you're going to be, like, you look out over the crowd, and you are eventually going to realize, looking at the bar, that, yeah, that's your old war buddy, Patrick. I, I will, I will cheer, and I'm like, hey, Patrick! Hey! All right, now's when you run luck. <laughs> <laughs> you! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, he'll look up. His eyes are a little foggy for a moment. Uh, staring across the crowd, he kind of goes like this. And he goes, Bloody victory! <laughs> <laughs> I, I will I will go immediately up to him and like, uh, How's it been? Uh, you doing good for yourself, man? Working in a bar down in the docks. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, you, know, you know us, Yanks. We don't really understand proper culture. Sure. How come you haven't been shot yet? <laughs> no, one, no one's had a good enough aim. He has been shot. <laughs> Several <laughs> times. Walk up. He just had a good doctor. <laughs> Well, if I could meet this they doctor, I'd, I'd buy to... him a drink. Oh, I'll pat him on. like a drink <laughs> right now. <laughs> All right, there's another. He cheers again. He pours you a big glass of beer. Uh, it is foul. <laughs> it's nothing like the booze I gave you. What? Uh, quick question. Yeah. I, I remember a piece of note. Was it the White Spider Society or something like that? Uh, the White Spider was asking... Hmm. Was it an individual? Where was that note? Because I don't remember if the White Spider was the one who was asking to have the, the author's contract canceled or the one who was being asked to do it. I'll have to look that up. But uh, it seemed to be uh, either an either an organization or a person was requesting, uh, I mean, pretty obviously, Hammer's death. Gotcha. I'm going, uh, I'm going to, you know, visit, see how he's doing. Uh you know, make sure make sure he hasn't got shot at too many times since he's got that. Yeah. You're gonna find out that he's married now. He has uh he has a couple of kids at home. <laughs> I'm like, oh you're gonna come up with names for this? No, we don't need to come up with names for yeah, it. I know, I know, I know. Um uh, he's his dad's his dad father has passed away since the war. He's still taking care of his mother. Uh, 
Are you going to introduce your own sad news? No, no, no. I, I'll just uh, like we. Uh, I've had some hard times, but you know, a soldier as a soldier, you just have to trudge along. Okay, uh, is Theodore here with you? Uh, our, our, he's like seventeen. Is he allowed in bar to pubs? I mean, this is again <laughs> a pub set by the docks. The, they are not carding. Oh, then yeah, he, he's totally right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, what's carding? So you can introduce uh... him to your son and catch up like that. Now, uh, what was it you were trying to get by having an old friend be in the neighborhood? Well, I, I was especially a bartender. I was going to see if I can't probe him. I, I'll, I'll be upfront. Like I, I'm on a job. Uh, a friend of mine died. He in his will he left a big chunk of money to solve his murder. Okay. And that uh, we we had heard uh, one of the uh, so what are our clues for in London right now? The White Spider. Uh, yes. That uh, I think it was the White Spider requesting for the author's ca contract to be canceled. Uh, Hammer had a business card from the director of the Penhue Foundation. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is where Hammer wrote those notes that were becoming increasingly unhinged. I will also, you know, I'll also like describe Hammer, you know, see, see if someone like that was hanging around pubs, either garnering a bad reputation or... Uh, I, I'm asking for a lot. I'm not expecting a lot. Well, I think... Uh, so, it's not unreasonable to ask whether he was hanging around in Dockside pubs. However, at this point in his life, he was very, very focused on a singular goal. And mm. I think that this uh, that this dock pub is probably not where he spent his time. Hmm. Hmm. Would the would would Patrick have heard of something along the lines of a white spider? Uh our good friend Patrick. I'm going to say for him to have heard of the white spider is such an incredible leap that I'm gonna need you to make a luck roll and it's gonna need to be an extreme success. This is where I roll a one. It might be, and it might wreck the whole chapter, but we're going to find out. Uh, oh, well, you got a one, but you also got an 80. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, he's he's sorry. He says he heard those things can be dangerous. Have you been, have you tried the zoo or the uh, the animatological society? <laughs> oh, did we get a heal up, by the way? In the yeah, week yeah. or so that we spent there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're back to full health. Yeah. Yeah, and our sanity should be health. fine. It's a shot in the dark. Yeah. I'm going to try, I'm trying to track this person or group down. Okay. So, um, you're not going to get specific information about your, about your case here. But you have established a contact with the uh, not not exactly the underworld, but with locals and uh, possibly possibly people who know somebody who knows somebody. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That that was like the bare my bare minimum of trying to achieve here. Okay. Who else is doing something in the pub tonight? I am currently. I. Trying uh, to finish that ahead. drink. <laughs> All right, I'm having, I'm, I'm struggling, but I'm doing it. I'm doing it for Connor. He's doing it for Connor. <laughs> Give me a Constitution roll. This is Question: How are you trying to drink it? <laughs> are you sipping it slowly? Are you oh, trying, trying to drink to it normally? It. Yeah, apparently you are going to chug it, and it goes <laughs> yeah. down like it's not a good taste. Man. But you have me, no me, problem swallowing it. Me and him are doing the line of shots. 
challenge. <laughs> you know, you pick oh, it up, no, you I, tap I'm, it, I'm you shrink that, it. That beer that I got, mm. and I am I am trying to down that whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said I am struggling. Apparently not struggling as much as you might have, though. Connor is, like, you know, stamping his hand taste. on the table. Hey. Encouraging you to go, 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 go. <laughs> Andrew, we yeah. raised this boy on heavy shine. He's going to handle some watery <laughs> beer. He's going to handle that beer. You hope Leech it's water. in the grave. <laughs> well, and I, it's down. Why not me? And Connor, uh, you have you took the iron liver and talent. You don't have to roll mm-hmm. anything. You're fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. I'm good. Technically, <laughs> technically, it does not make me immune to alcohol. No, but it comes up so rarely that I'm gonna let you have it. Yeah. Oh, uh, it, it's just spending luck to not have a hangover. That's what Iron Liver. You know, is. say like, this, I an idea pops in my mind, right? Uh-huh. Uh huh. I'll lean over to Patrick. Hey, who here? Who here? Um. Okay, I, I, I will. I will ask Joey. Right. Um. Yeah. I, I'm planning on getting you into a drinking contest. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I um I, I am tr- either thinking about uh, like hey who here's like the most who here would be in the know for things you know maybe in a gang or something like that get, help us get a contact or who here uh or who here would be able to drink the most and just make a big put the attention just on you what would you rather do? Uh, seeing as I had lagged out halfway, so I'm seeing, thinking that you said, who's here is in the know, or who here is, like, somebody that we could get information get, out of. Yeah. Do you want to get info, or do you want the spotlight? Yeah, yeah, spotlight. Do you want a drink, or do you want to have information? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drink. You guys get the information <laughs> while I'm drinking. No, 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 I, I'm gonna be using you. No, oh, yeah, use me. Use, use me as the distraction while you guys get information. I'm totally for this. Kinky? Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, hey, Patrick. <laughs> it's, it's my friend's birthday. And, well, he, he has a very good pension for knocking down drinks. I'm thinking about setting up a little challenge. Who, 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 which one out of everyone here do you think would be the most interesting for a oh, drink? The Russian. Like the Russian? He's going to nod over to the corner where there's a large, uh, a large furry man. <laughs> <laughs> is he sitting, is he by himself? Uh, is it a high quality suit? It is not a high quality suit, no. Uh, it is, it is in fact an A shirt. Like a, he's not, he's here in his undershirt. Hey, you said he was a furry man, so I had to ask about the fur suit. I know. I'm just trying to redirect <laughs> without acknowledging it. <laughs> Too bad. Um. Uh, yeah, he is sitting by himself and kind of um, uh. surly as he observes the room, but just pounds away his own drinks. I'm really bad at talking. My character's not for this. Um, Birdie, on the other hand, as as the resident um, talkative uh, charmer, okay. <laughs> I, 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 have I, I will. Yes. I, I will lean over and uh, tell her about this plan. I bet. I bet Connor could drink them under the table and, you know, making ourselves look good would be helpful. We need a friends. We can make some. And while we're doing that, we can also, you know, start, we can, we start a pot of how much these two can drink. <laughs> this is an Irish bar. They will love him. I've got one better. I'm going to pull my my flask out with the good shine. And I'm just going to set it on the counter. 
I'm going to motion Patrick over. Give me a shot glass. I want you to have a little taste of this, just so you can vouch for me. We're going to put this in the pot. Winner gets high quality booze. All right. So I'm, I'm going to donate a little bit to the bartender just to sweeten him up. All right. Uh, yeah, he will absolutely go for it. And you do have high quality booze, so he will appreciate it. Can I help you? Do you have something you'd like to announce to the internet? And at this point, you're just uh, all working together to set up a drinking contest between these yeah. two men? Yeah. And make money. All right. <laughs> uh, go ahead and throw... <laughs> That's... Uh, how, do you, how do you actually do this? So you've, you've established that you have good quality booze that's going to go in the pot. <clears throat> But just tell me, how do you arrange this contest in the bar? Is the guy sitting at the table alone? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Give me a second to think about this. Question, Joe. Joey, was your character born in... I, hmm. I yeah, he's born Dublin. You want an idea? Yeah. See, what I'm thinking is I'm just going to go up to the table and... No? No, no, no. We're going to make a scene. We're going to draw all the attention on Connor. What I'm thinking about is announcing um, uh, there, the person, uh, person in this bar who thinks that they can drink more than our dear friend Connor as he is a true Irishman and like start a little bit of a haze. Oh, 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 no. You know, and then like you know, hey, Irish man or uh, Russian. Okay. We heard so, that you could knock him down. So we're doing a little bit of a freak show thing. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, I'm totally abusing the fact that he he's he doesn't have to roll too much. I could literally drink ethanol, and I would be okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Because because like I the wish... more people. I wish Iron Stomach made you immune to hangover, but resistant to poison. You know what I mean? Instead. Instead of it just being alcohol-based. Mm -hmm. He's got the strongest working liver in the world, is, is the trait that it should be. Okay. I'm so, trying to think of how I'm going to say this to the room. Well, I mean, it if you're willing to, if you are willing to go with that plan, I'm pretty sure it's gonna work. Yeah. Everybody's oh. half drunk already. Oh yeah. <laughs> My friend here is a true born and bred Irishman, and I think he can drink every damn one of you under the table. Who wants to prove me wrong? And then I'm gonna point to the Russian specifically. You look like you might be able to take him. Anybody else? <laughs> All right. Uh, let me see. I think. I think to be honest, that sounds more like a like a threat. <laughs> like getting more like some intimidation. More use out of that inti yeah, getting some more use out of that thirty-five intimidate. But everybody's drunk, so take a bonus die. <laughs> <laughs> Can can I have another bonus die because I'm a pretty woman? No, that's part of the bonus <laughs> die. No, because I'm a pr the only pretty I... lady in a bar full of dock workers. Uh, that uh, that might be assuming too much about their their taste. That's <laughs> that's fair. All right, regular roll plus one. Yeah, no problem. 
So, uh, yeah, there is there is a, a cheer and angry shouts at the same time. Uh, our friend uh, Ivan, of course. <laughs> because of course. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if he's Italian, you need to call him Mario or something. I've got a limited range. Yeah, he could be Misha. It, it's like sure. the, it's the John. It means bear. So his real actual name is Misha. He's sensitive and an artist, but everybody calls him Ivan. Oh, now I feel bad. We singled him out. Uh, and he's going to stomp over to the counter in his large boots. And he's going to go drink for drink with Connor. And I would have us do an exciting roll off, except that I have the for this, you just completely ignore the effects of alcohol. So you're going to win. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just how many drinks it takes until yes. he loses, which I so still think I'm going we should to say, roll for. As it as it is reaching the early hours of the morning, it's probably you're probably going to be drinking for three or four hours in this contest. Before finally, he kind of leans over onto the bar and he puts his arm around you. And he is a large man. And you, so when he pounds you on the back a few times, you do feel it. And you stumble into the bar too. But you know at this point that you are friends. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Connor, and Connor's he... been laughing and joking with him the entire time. Like, and I think that as he collapses onto the uh, mostly beer-soaked floor, that's what we're going to call it for this week. Hey. <laughs> Good Objective, Lord. make friends. Complete. Yeah, you have established... <laughs> like, you came to this city that none of you have ever been to, and at the end of the evening, you already have some friends. Yeah, we have about so, three. Uh, I would Could call that a mission accomplished. Fight me. <laughs> violence. He chose violence. Peace I stopped petting him, and apparently that was grounds for biting. <laughs> Does so anybody have any questions? Was, uh, no <laughs> Anything oh, no, you want to say none. before we, we call it for the night? Uh, uh -huh. Take care of each other. Um... Granted, I know we have a limited audience, but the Writers Guild is going on strike as of this week. This is going to affect the entire world. This is going to be for writers globally, not just in the U.S. What is it? And uh, it, it's a Writers Guild. Basically, um, I'll, I'll send you link to material later. But okay. effectively... The people who write TV shows are going on strike because they're being mistreated. Understandable. Mm. Okay, yeah, understandable. And um, part of it is please do not use AI writing tools because that's kind of what they're being replaced with. Oh, mm. God, no. Yeah. Why? So please don't use those tools even for fun because the use will... D don't cross the picket line, fellas. What? Thank you for your input. All right, everybody. Have a good evening. Have a good night. Good night. Have a good night.